So this one is uh, <clears throat> very bittersweet for me because my entire career coaching uh, basketball at Wofford College, I was looking for an Eric Garcia. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very envious of Mike Young because he got him. And, and, and many of you don't know, Mike was my assistant for 13 years. And the joke was every year we were recruiting a point guard because we could never find an Eric. Um, Eric had a wonderful career at Wofford, was simply a great floor leader, floor captain. Uh, and, and not to... Um, uh, disparage any other positions on the team, but it starts with the point guard. Uh, Eric was part of NCAA and Southern Conference championships in 14 and 15. He ended his career with 1,260 points. And for a point guard, that's pretty remarkable. <clears throat> 27th in program history, uh, 537 career assists, second all-time in tops in the Division I era. He also became Wofford's first player with 1,000 career points and 500 career assists. Uh, fourth in program history with starts, 121 starts. First team All-Southern Conference in 2017 by coaches and media. Uh, NABC All-District Honors. He led the SOCON with 6.8 assists per game, uh, which is remarkable, and set a school record with 226 assists in a single season. One of the things, and I could go on, there, there are stats here that we could read for hours, but just as on the human side, our president, Dr. Sam Hatt, came to Wofford and his first uh, Southern Conference tournament was 2014. And we were sitting together and uh, he had never uh, been in, in a Division I setting. So with the Southern Conference tournament, there's, there's just excitement, enthusiasm, uh, winners go home, losers advance. Uh, and, and a freshman point guard named Eric Garcia ran the club, he had zero turnovers that first game. And we came back for the second game. Now my president started to get a little excited. He, he won the second game, and now we're in the finals. And oh, by the way, Eric had zero turnovers in that game too, as a point guard. And Eric played the championship game, led us to a victory, advanced us to the NCAA tournament. A freshman point guard with zero turnovers through three champ, uh, championship games. I mean, that is really a remarkable statistic. And even though I can't verify that, I don't know of any other point guard, uh, let alone a freshman point guard, uh, that did that in a, in a championship tournament. Uh, Eric was just simply remarkable that the very next year, uh, I think just to prove he was human, Eric had one turnover. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and we won a second NC, uh, Southern Conference Championship in advance to the NCAA tournament. And I looked over at my president who was beaming and I said, uh, Naif, it, it, it's not this easy. Because <laughs> I think he thought you just come in and you win every year because that's all he knew. And that was in large part due to Eric and a couple of his teammates that we're gonna be inducting today. So with that, um, uh, one of the greatest point guards in Wofford history, uh, and, and Mike Young regrets that he can't be here. Uh, he's coaching his team now. Uh, so it's, it, even though I didn't get to coach Eric, I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to induct him in the Wofford College Athletic Hall of Fame. All right, of course, uh, I had to go first today. So, yeah. Uh, uh, first off, just want to say thank you, um, you know, to be here. Congratulations to, to everyone that's being honored. It's cool to look around and see. Uh, a lot of us came in uh, into Wofford at the same time, so it's really awesome. Um, I'm just going to keep this short. Uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, all my teammates and coaches. Um, obviously, I wouldn't be up here without them. We had some amazing teams, and I made memories that will, you know, last a lifetime. Um, I just, coming out from Colorado, I was a little nervous. I had never been in the South before. I didn't understand, you know, the culture and everything. Um, but as time went on, I met so many wonderful people at Wofford, and uh, I really felt like it was my second home. Um, and I still feel that way now. I've been back. I brought my fiance and my mom, and uh, just just really feels like home. So, uh, not going to go any longer. Just want to say thank you and and have a great day.
Unfortunately, we just found out that Spencer Collins is under the weather and will not be able to make it here today, but I'm going to call on one of the voices of the Terriers, Tom Henson, to induct him and accept on his behalf. Thank you, Elizabeth. Spencer Collins graduated from Wofford in 2016. He was a four-year starter, All-Southern Conference freshman in 2013, All-Southern Conference in 2015, All-Southern Conference in 2016, and was a member of the 2014 and 2015 Southern Conference championship teams. Played in the NCAA tournament twice in 2014 against Michigan and in 2015 against Arkansas. And if you remember that game, I don't know still how they didn't get a technical for throwing the shoe on the court. Uh, stopped a Wofford breakaway that would have been two points for us. Um, Spencer started all 132 games in which he played for Wofford. He's third in school history in games played. Tenth in school history with 1,696 points scored. Tenth in school history in field goals made with 573. 408 career rebounds, 194 career assists. What I remember most about Spencer, though, was uh, his quirkiness and uh, his uh, love of just people. Spencer was one of those guys on bus trips. I don't know how many times he tried to talk Ron Reynolds, our bus driver, into letting him drive the bus. <laughs> Eric, I know you know that that was a great idea that Ron did not let him do that. Um, the other thing Spencer did was he always wanted to be behind the microphone. So when I was broadcasting games, he would want to try to see how he could get on the microphone. I always told him, all you have to do is have a great game and you're gonna get on the microphone. And more times than not, Spencer did end up talking with us on post game. If he was here today, I was gonna say, Spencer, the microphone is yours. Congratulations on being inducted into the Wofford College Hall of Fame. Um, we'll get this to Spencer and I accept on his behalf. And uh, I know he'd wanna thank all of you guys that are being honored here today as well and thank his teammates and his coaches. Um, his legacy will, will remain uh, a highlight of, uh, of Wofford Terrier basketball. Congratulations to all you guys, thank you. We will move on to Lee Skinner who is still playing abroad so he's also not available to be with us today but I'll ask Richard to return to the podium. This is yet another player that, uh, that Coach Young held out on me. Uh, Lee Skinner was just like Eric Garcia, just an extraordinary player. Um, he led the team uh, in, in the 2014 and 15 Southern Conference uh, tournament uh, playing, uh, playing with Eric. He had career co totals like Eric of 1,242 points, which is 27th in school history. He got him beat by one. Um, 914 rebounds, which is extraordinary for a young man his size, 10th uh, in school history, and he also had 269 assists uh, in 33, 133 career games. Uh, he was the 2014-15 uh, all-conference selection, uh, and in 2015 he was the Southern Conference Tournament's most outstanding player. Uh, also an NABC All-District 22 second team uh, member, Started all 35 games as a senior uh, and played 32 minutes in the NCAA tournament game that uh, Tom alluded to against Arkansas. Uh, just, a, just a great competitor. Uh, Lee was just one of those kids that just laid it online every time he went out. <clears throat> and um, I've got a quote from Mike. And this was, Mike just, Mike just loved Lee's toughness. Uh, and in talking with Mike, uh, he said, he's one of the toughest, smartest basketball players I've ever coached. He was the emotional leader in the locker room and on the floor. Those back-to-back -back championships of 13-14 and 14-15, he was just extraordinary. He was a fearless player, made himself into a great defensive player and rebounder, but maybe it's his greatest attribute was something that's really hard to quantify. He affected winning by his sheer presence, tenacity, and toughness. Lee Skinner was terrific and was an absolute pleasure to coach. Uh, and you can see why both uh, Lee and Eric are up here being inducted. Eric was the calm, cool one out there, directing everything, and Lee was the emotional one, and they were just a terrific pair. 
Uh, so with that, uh, Lee is not being able to be here, but we do have a video uh, of Lee. Hey everyone, it's Lee Skinner here. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not able to make it this weekend, but I did want to say just how thankful and honored I am to be inducted into the 2022 Hall of Fame. Uh, big congratulations to the rest of the inductees. Um, and a big thank you to my coaches, my teammates, the athletic department, my professors and classmates for all the great memories. Um, thanks again. Hope everyone is well. And go Terriers. Next, I'll ask our head baseball coach, Todd Interdonado, to come introduce Will Stillman. First of all, congratulations to everybody. This is a truly extraordinary class. Um, looking at these guys, you know, you've been here for a few years and just watching these guys go through. And the special group that we're inducting today is really another level. So congratulations to everybody. Anytime you get to these points when you're inducting somebody to the Hall of Fame, it, it always makes us think back to how it started. And uh, we first saw Will on our own field playing for a travel team. And their summer coach comes up to us and says, hey, when this kid comes in the game, make sure you guys are watching. And JJ and I were sitting up in the press box. You know, it's one of those summer days here in Spartanburg where it's 95 degrees and the press box is 115 and sitting there and they're like, okay, when this kid comes in the game, you know, pay attention. Okay. Will comes in the game and in my head I'm thinking, this is the kid? <laughs> that looks like a scarecrow in a t-shirt trying to pitch <laughs> out there. And he gets on the mound and it is electric and undersized and you just, there was just something about him. And it was one of those kids that you felt like he was worth taking a chance on. For whatever reason, just kind of had that, that Wofford fit that we all can know and feel, but it's just really kind of hard to describe in words. But you just kind of recognize what a Wofford guy looks like when you've done this long enough. My favorite story about Will is when he comes on his visit, um, him and his family come up to visit, and we're taking him around and we're taking him through everything. And uh, the Taylor Center, the weight room is relatively new at the time. And we bring Will through the weight room and it wasn't really planned or anything, but we just happened to have him walk through there while our guys are lifting. And my guess is at the time, Will had probably not lifted a weight in his life when he walked through the weight room. And the look on his face when he was walking through, watching our guys lift weights, I turned and he walked out of the weight room and I looked at, I looked at our assistant coach at the time, I go, I don't think this guy's gonna do this. If he thinks that he's gotta be in the weight room this much and lift this much weight, he may not, he may not do this. Uh, but he ended up committing and by the time we were finishing his freshman year, he had went from what we saw taking a chance on, academic scholarship, basically just a flyer to our most reliable relief pitcher as a freshman coming out of the bullpen in his first season. In 2014 was our first winning year in Division I history, and Will was a huge part of that. We played 59 games that year. As a relief pitcher, he made 34 appearances, which is just mind-boggling for somebody to make that many appearances. Career record for saves overall, single season saves record, most appearances in a season, most appearances overall in a career, just one of the most reliable relief pitchers we've ever had. I told him before this, we inducted Matthew into the Hall of Fame last year, Will this year, and that class that Will came in with, Luke's obviously sitting up there as well. To me, I just still think that's the most important class in the evolution of our program from where it was to where we are now. There was a saying going around the SOCON at the time, don't let them get to Stillman. And that was when you have a player like that who can impact the game where people are game planning against, you know you have a special one. Telling our players this morning, the most unique thing about Will, it was the best single pitch that I have ever coached. His breaking ball was the single best pitch that I have ever coached. When that thing was for a strike, it was absolutely electric and unhittable. It was the single best pitch I have ever seen and ever coached in my 22 years of college baseball. My favorite thing about Will is just this gross split in his personality that he has. And Will is a very fun-loving, very goofy, 
uh, loves to laugh, loved to piss, piss me off at practice, loved to kind of poke the bear and needle the dragon and all those things. And it was just this loose, fun-loving guy, but then on the field, just a ultra, ultra ruthless competitor. And still, maybe the biggest split of personality that I've seen from off-field to on-field. When you take a chance on a guy like Will and he comes through, it's why you coach. It's why we do what we do. And he is the epitome of Wofford Athletics. Congratulations. Thank you, Coach I, for making me sound a lot better than I think I really was. Um, but we'll all have to take his word for it here because nobody can make it to the ninth inning of a baseball game uh, with how long and boring they are. So <laughs> uh, we just have that to go with. Um, congrats to all the other inductees. It's really special going in with you guys, having watched all of you play uh, during my time here at Wofford. Um, so I'm just really thankful to be a part of this group. Uh, thank you to the Hall of Fame committee who chose me to represent Wofford in Wofford baseball. Wofford means the world to me and has given me so much, and I am really, really grateful and thankful for that. Um, without Wofford, I wouldn't have met my beautiful fiance. Um, she, we did, she'd never seen me play baseball, so she's part of all of you guys, too. Um, and we didn't know each other here at Wofford, but uh, she came into my life at the perfect time when uh, my baseball career was ending, and, and uh, I'm really excited for, for what's next and to see what's next. Uh, thank you to my family and all the sacrifices they gave, gave up for me to be able to pursue baseball and the career of baseball. They, they traveled to every single game from Charlotte to here in away games, not knowing if I would be playing at all. Uh, it's not like basketball or football where you're in the starting lineup. I was, I was never sure if I was gonna play and they would still show up every single day. And um, that support meant the world to me, it really did. Um, Thank you to all my teammates, the ones that are here, the ones that aren't. You guys are my best friends. Uh, Wofford baseball really was a family to me. Um, all my times with you guys were the special ones that I remember, not the games, but uh, all the memories that we had on and, on and off the field with you guys. And um, Thank you to my coaches, Coach I, JJ, and Coach Berg. Uh, I think all the credit goes to you guys. Uh, you made me into the player that I was. I came to Wofford as a very average high school player. He painted it a different story, but I know I was very, very average. And they were the only ones that gave me a chance. And I had a different view of the recruiting story that I'd like to share my side. Um, I remember sitting in the office with Coach I and him talking to me, giving me the whole spiel. And I told him, I'm on the fence if I even want to go play D1 baseball or not. I was, I had gotten into colleges and I told him that and he looked me dead in the eyes and said, well, that would be a huge waste of talent. And they believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself. So I owe them everything. And <laughs> to the weight room story, <laughs> credit them. I came into Wofford, so you have, you have that you, and the weakest people are on the last one, right? Came into there on the last one, I left on the last one. I think that's my <laughs> biggest accomplishment, so. Um, but seriously, very, very thankful for this award and opportunity, and um, excited to be back on campus, and, and have a great weekend, and thank you all, so. Head men's golf coach Van Williams will introduce Andrew.
Well, I never had an uh, opportunity to coach Andrew, and uh, Sam and I are working diligently to get his COVID year back <clears throat> um, so he can come play for me. Um, but uh, Coach Lipscomb's here today, and uh, Coach Lipscomb had an opportunity to coach him. Um, Andrew uh, had arguably the best uh, single uh, career here in men's golf uh, at Wofford. Andrew Novak is a native of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, and earned his degree in business economics in 2017. During his time at Wofford, Novak was three-time All-Southern Conference selection and two-time NCAA Regional Individual Qualifier. He was the 2017 Southern Conference Player of the Year with a 71.1 stroke average in his senior year. He is the only player in school history to make two NCAA appearances, finish in the top 20 both times. He was a two-time Ping All-Region East Team selection as he finished his career with a 72.2 stroke average as a Terrier. Andrew currently holds program records for most wins, which is four, uh, most top five finishes, which is 15, and most top 10 finishes, 23. And Andrew just finished his first season on the PGA Tour. Um, in 2021, after finishing top 25 on the Corn Ferry Tour, uh, he earned his PGA Tour, tour card. Uh, please welcome 2017 graduate of Wofford, PGA Tour player, Andrew Novak. First off, um, I'm glad he could make it today. Uh, Vic, I gotta thank you for this. Um, I only had one offer uh, for college golf and it came from Vic Lipscomb. Um, that's the reason I'm here. Uh, and honestly, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, so thank you for, for taking a chance on me and uh, letting me come here and, and continue to play golf at uh, the collegiate level. Um, this is where I met my beautiful wife, Maddie. She's, uh, she's also here today. Um, another reason why coming to Wofford was so fantastic. Um, I'd like to thank my, my family as well. Uh, my dad and mom, they came to, I think, every tournament, maybe, maybe missed one or two, I don't know. But uh, collegiately, every event, they found a way. Uh, I've got two sisters and a brother. Uh, and through junior golf, they found a way to take me to tournaments uh, every weekend, whenever. Whenever I was playing, which meant, you know, not even the one that was taking me and driving me three hours. That meant the other parent that's sitting there stuck uh, watching the other three kids. I mean, you know, they're, they're good kids. You know, they're good kids, but three kids is a lot of kids. So um, thank you. Thank you so much um, for doing that uh, for me. Um, to all the other inductees, congratulations. Uh, this, is, this is a big honor. And uh, it's... I don't know, it's really impressive. There's, there's nine of us this year. All of us were in school at the same time. Um, that does not happen every year for this. Uh, I think there was definitely a culture of winning that was set here. You know, seeing all y'all succeeding, doing what you're doing. Um, I think we were pushing each other, whether we, whether we knew it or not. I think we were definitely pushing each other uh, to go win and, and be great. So uh, congratulations to y'all. Um, uh, thank you to my teammates. Uh, they... Uh, they played golf with me. Uh, <laughs> they went to class sometimes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love all of them though. Uh, they, made, they made my four years here so fun. Um, I'm just so blessed uh, to be honored with this. And um, you know, thank you. I almost forgot uh, the Spencers. You know, when, when my parents couldn't take me to tournaments, uh, y'all came through. And uh, this, this one, my second family, my second mom, my second brother. Uh, I appreciate y'all. And um, I'm just so glad to be here and, and blessed to be honored with this. Thank y'all. Matt is also not available to be with us today, but our head men's soccer coach, Joel Tyson, is here to introduce him. Andrew, I, I don't know anything about golf, man, but I, you know, I've seen Tin Cup and Happy Gilmore. Um, if you're looking for a caddy, 
Uh, okay, okay. I didn't know if anybody put their name in the hat yet, so I thought I'd go ahead and throw myself in there. Um, you know, I think Andrew made a point that I think is pretty remarkable when you look at the, the graduation years of the people that are inducted here. Um, you know, I was fortunate. Uh, it's kind of a full circle moment for me with Matthew Arednick being inducted into the Hall of Fame today. Uh, I was a part of his recruitment process as an assistant coach here, and I was able to see him as a 17-year-old. Um, I would call him a boy, um, but for any of you guys who know Matthew, he's this six foot three. 185 pound kid uh, who I thought Mike Ayers might actually steal from me once I got him on campus. Um, and so to see him go from, uh, you know, from a high school student to be now inducted into the Wofford College Hall of Fame is pretty remarkable. Um, you know, Matthew cannot be here today um, if it's any indication of what type of young man this guy is. Right now he's currently serving our country uh, in a special forces unit. And so, you know, he left with a Wofford degree and decided to, uh, you know, enlist in the military, and now he's serving our country. So, you know, for that, we are very proud of him. Not only, yeah, I, absolutely. <laughs> and, and what's unique about Matthew's group, you know, he graduated in 2017. In, in that graduating class, um, you know, we had two other Hall of Fame inductees that we were able to induct last year. And we also had uh, another special forces person in the same graduating group in the same team. So, um, you know, Matthew was cut from a cloth that was different than most. Um, you know, during the recruiting process, what most people don't know was uh, the first time I saw Matthew, I was actually on the wrong field and I wasn't even supposed to be watching that game. Um, but when I looked out there, you know, I saw this absolute giant of a person um, bullying kids and taking balls and putting them in the back of the net and we, we knew exactly that was the guy for us and he came here and, and Matthew graduated being a part of uh, the winningest class in Division I men's soccer history here at Wofford, uh, won a Southern Conference championship and, and actually scored a goal um, to secure a regular season championship for Dr. Sam Hatt's first championship here as president in 2013. So uh, we're beyond proud of Matthew and his contributions to Wofford and the contributions that he's given to our, to our country now. So, thank you. Hi everyone, Matt Redney, class of 2017. First off, just wanted to apologize and say I wish I could be there to celebrate with you. Uh, it's an extreme honor to be inducted into the Hall of Fame in a moment I will cherish for the rest of my life. To the other inductees, congratulations, you deserve it. You've accomplished so much for your prospective sports, and I enjoyed watching you play just as much as I enjoyed playing my own sport. Uh, I'd like to thank my family, my parents, Mitch and Jen, my siblings, Aaron, Zoe, and Asher, and all my extended family for always encouraging me and supporting me throughout my career. Uh, to the trainers, coaches, and players that kept me fit, healthy, and driven during my time at Wofford, I could not have done it without you, so thank you. Uh, to Coach Tyson, uh, you're the main reason I committed to Wofford. All that time you spent coming to my games in high school, all the phone calls, all the strings you pulled, it paid off, and I couldn't be more grateful. And I wish you the best of luck the rest of this season and for future seasons, and hopefully you get a good beat down of the Paladins tonight. Uh, to the current team, don't take for granted what you have. Um, great coaching staff, facilities, and the Wofford environment and community. Uh, you couldn't ask for anything better. Um, it goes by fast, so enjoy it. And thanks again. Thank you, guys. Coach Rod Ray is here to introduce Harris. I've been uh, fired up about today ever since I found out Harris's induction. Um, and then to look at the, the fellow inductees uh, makes it even more special. What a great class. Congratulations to, to each of you, outstanding. And that was such a great time for Wofford Athletics, the period of time that you all represented. Um, and you've set the bar high, high for us and we appreciate that. Uh, Harris, unbelievable player. Um, played at the top of our lineup for four years. One of the best players, college players, not only that I've coached, but that I've seen. One of the best college tennis players that I've ever seen. 
um, played with great courage. Um, and, and that's what got us here, Harris's courage. Um, but that started, that courage started when he got, off, got on the plane to come here from Australia as an 18 year old, got on the plane and got off the plane from Australia and, and started a new career. Um, what, what great courage. And I think about, you know, coaches, coaches learn from, we learn from our players and to, to have the courage to get on the plane in Australia and, and come to a new school with new people, a new culture, new coaches, new everything, and then to get off the plane. And uh, Harris, I'm fired up because you keep teaching me about what plane do I need to get on and get off? And, um, and I'm, I'm learning, you know, but what a, what a great player. And, but also, to, um, we had a great team and, and some, of you, some of your teammates are here. We had a great team and we had Harris. And, uh, and, and that gave us a lot of confidence. But to have a, to have a player of this stature who, who cared about others more than he cared about himself was terrific. To, to, be, to be one of the best players in the country and to care about your teammates more than you care about yourself, that is so rare. And, and, and that's, that's Harris. Um, to, to be one of the most caring people I've ever met. Um, selfless and just a fantastic teammate. Um, Harris had a good freshman year. He played at the top of our lineup. Um, but, but came back that fall and I remember watching Harris and we were training and, and he would hit shots and I'd look at him in awe and disbelief and he'd say things like, that was pretty good, wasn't it, coach? I was like, that's about the best I've ever seen, you know? And, and, and that's, that's kind of how I coached Harris. Like, that was pretty darn good. And he's like, yeah, I think that was pretty good. Well, that sophomore year, he went 16 and two. 16 and two, okay? Um, 16 and two, and we play a great schedule. You know, I'm talking about beating the best players at South Carolina, Clemson. Um, we, we'd go to tournaments and people would say, who's that? You know, and um, I, was, I was pretty proud of those times. Um, 16 and two, five and zero oh in three set matches. And the coaching would be like, uh, Harris, maybe you can do this. And he'd be like, yeah, I can definitely do that. And he'd go on and win, and win the match. And that's, that's how it went. Um, courageous, selfless, um, unbelievable player. Um, challenged with adversity, never quit. Loved his teammates more than he loved himself. I don't know what more a teammate or a coach can ask for. Thank you, Harris. Well, uh, thanks for those kind words, Coach. Um, first of all, congrats to all the other inductees. You're all winners on and off the court or field or uh, pitch, right? Uh, um, the athletic department, um, thanks to you guys uh, for making us feel important five years later or more. Um, my teammates, most of which I still keep in touch with, um, Parks, Kyle, thanks for being here. You guys are also my girlfriend. Thanks for coming with me. Um, but most of all, thanks to Coach. Um, I get the question a lot, you know, what brought you here from Australia? You're so far away from home, but the truth is, Coach made it feel like home. Um, yeah, and I have no other words to say. Every year I kept coming back because I love the guys so much. Um, yeah, and I was always ready for the next year, always ready for the next team to come in, and, you know, we'd all do our best, and, yeah, it was just incredible. So. Coach, many thanks to you, and I know we'll be friends for the rest of our lives, and all the relationships, relationships I've made here, it's good seeing all you guys again, but yeah, my experiences at Wofford was unparalleled to anything I've done ever before, so thank you to everyone. Anton is not available to be with us, but Richard is here to introduce him. There, 
I think there's a pattern emerging. They gave me the, the basketball players to introduce, and now they give me the, the football player from Sweden, um, as my grandparents were immigrants. Um, Anton Warby, uh, 47 career games and 43 career starts, an extraordinary record. All Southern Conference, first team, 2014, 2015, 2016. AP All-American, third team, 2016. Earned a spot on the Southern Conference's 100th anniversary team, uh, one of eight Wofford players to do so. Uh, Anton started 43 of 47 games at right tackle. He was third in school history with 525 knockdown blocks. And as a senior, he started all 14 games on the team that reached the FCS playoffs, one against Charleston Southern and the Citadel before falling at Youngstown State in two overtimes and the quarterfinals. Uh, he was named first team by the uh, coaches and the media in that season. Just an extraordinary football player, a gentle giant off the court. Um, really just, just everything you would want in, in, in a student athlete. Uh, native of Karls Krona, Sweden. Um, he was elected Phi Beta Kappa. COSIDA, all dist academic, all district. FCS, um, academic all-star. And he was the 2017 FCS um, Scholar Athlete of the Year. A tremendous honor. Uh, Coach Ayers' comments, Anton was an outstanding player with great character, a tremendous leader. His football technique was exceptional. Constantly trying to improve his game, I believe he was one of the best in our league during his junior and senior year, uh, and his stats would certainly back that up. Uh, Anton Warby is currently a medical student in Sweden and will finish uh, his studies this year. Uh, so congratulations to Anton, and we have a video. Hall of Fame. Incredible. One of the first things that came to mind when I first found out this summer that I was going to be inducted into the Wofford Athletic Hall of Fame was that, wow, it's already been five years since the last time I had on a Wofford uniform and played football. Something that was such a big part of me for so long. Time fly as they say, and it sure has. Another thing that came to mind, certainly, were all the people who stood behind me and beside me during my Wofford journey as a student, as an athlete, and as a person. First and foremost, my family. Back home here in Sweden, my parents and my brother. The coaching staff at Wofford, who took a chance on a kid from across the Atlantic based on a four minute highlight tape. The strength staff, the athletic training staff, professors, and last, but certainly not least, the Chamberlain family. TJ and his parents, who took me in as their own, gave me a home away from home for the four and a half years that I was, that I was at Wofford, and uh, whom I spent countless spring breaks and Thanksgivings with. Having had some time to reflect and in all honesty, reminisce a good bit on my time at Wofford since I found out about this honor this summer. I also thought a good bit about the impact that going to Wofford has had on me. Not just as an athlete and a student, but as a person. And from doing all that thinking, I know this, that I came to Wofford in the spring of 2013 as a young kid and really having not much else on my mind than wanting to play football and a really strong desire to 
prove myself, wanting to figure out if I could make it as an athlete and a student at one of the highest possible levels. And four and a half years later, I left Wofford with a sense of that, yes, I could indeed. And that sense of confidence that was instilled in me during my time at Wofford is something that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life. It's something that I've drawn on as I've turned the page on my athletic career and found a new purpose in medicine. And it is something that I will continue to benefit from as I try to pay it forward in those aspects of my life that are yet to be determined. So as I reflect back on the people and on the value of my Wofford experience and education, I want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who stood beside me and behind me. And thank you to the selection committee for this fine honor. Go Terriers. Our faculty athletics representative is here to present to Lorenzo, Dr. Jamaica Hill. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to congratulate all the inductees today. Well deserved. Indeed, a winning tradition is exemplified during that um, time frame here at Wofford. And as a representative of the faculty, I'd like to say thank you all for not only being great athletes, but also being great students. Thank you. There's an African proverb that most of us have probably all heard, it takes a village to raise a child. And we kind of all know what that means. And our next inductee is, has indeed, does indeed have that village. Because a lot of our memories of our next inductee include memories of that village being here at Wofford as well. So last but certainly not least, I have the honor this morning to introduce our next inductee, Lorenzo Long, but most of us remember him as Zo. A three-time All-Southern Conference selection, Lorenzo played in 47 career games and ended his career with 666 carries for 3,479 yards, wow, and 43 touchdowns. He ranks fifth in school history in career rushing yards, fifth in career carries, and is third in career rushing yards. He played in every game as a freshman with 31 carries and then went on to lead the team in rushing as a sophomore, junior and senior. His senior season was one to remember. With the previous inductee, Anton Warby, another Hall of Fame inductee leading the way on the offensive line, Lorenzo led the team and the Southern Conference with 1,424 rushing yards. He also led the league in rushing touchdowns with 18. Following the season, he was named an All-American by multiple organizations, along with first team All-Southern Conference honors. During one stretch of that season, he had six straight games with over 100 rushing yards and scored 11 touchdowns in those six games. He had two touchdowns in the first round of the playoffs against Charleston Southern, then had 92 yards on 14 carries in a win at the Citadel. And I mentioned his village earlier, and the village was often represented by um, Dad. I think we all remember Dad down on the wall in Gibbs Stadium, giving Lorenzo the encouragement he needed um, and, and some other things that we won't talk about, okay? 
But after that win at the Citadel, I also remember Dad being probably the most enthusiastic Terrier fan after that win, meaning we were progressing on to the next round of the playoffs, and it was hard to contain him down there in Charleston. So we went on to Youngstown State, where Lorenzo finished the season with two touchdowns in that very cold weather. Coach Ayers has said that the other teams in the league didn't like tackling you, Lorenzo. He played much larger than his 5'9 height and 205 pounds that was listed on the roster and wasn't afraid to run over those would-be tacklers on the way to his 258 career points that are the third most in the 130-year history of Wofford football. A native of Pensacola, Lorenzo graduated with a degree in business economics. And most of you will remember Lorenzo like I did, with the long dreads, the braids hanging out the back of his helmet, uh, but I promise you this is him who you'll see up here next. <laughs> Congratulations, Lorenzo, and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Well deserved. Okay, um, I want to start this off with uh, thankful to uh, Coach Ayers uh, for giving me the opportunity to come to Wofford, man. The recruiting process to come to Wofford was definitely um, extremely different. Um, this w Wofford is the only school that actually gave me a chance to uh, further my education and um, play sports as far as football. Um, I remember, I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit, I, I promise you I won't take too much of your time, but um, I guess they saved me for last to just wrap everything up, man. <laughs> and um, no, nah, so I was sitting in the, the locker room and I, I've been talking with my parents just about college and I was like, man, I don't know where I'm going to go to school at, like everybody's kind of passing up on me, like it was really um, beating me up pretty bad. And I was sitting in the locker room and I received a phone call from Coach Romero, and he was like, hey, man, um, no, it, it, was, uh, it was Coach, um, God, I can't remember his name, because he, he's, no he's no longer coaching at Wofford, but it, uh, he, he called me, and he was like, man, we want to get, we want to take a chance on you and uh, offer you a scholarship to come to Wofford, and I was like, where? <laughs> and um, he was like, uh, Wofford, we're here in South Carolina, and I was like, Okay, uh, I mean, is there a way y'all can set it up where I can come, you know, take a visit to come see the school to make sure that it's real? And then he was like, uh, he's like, yeah, 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 so we'll, we'll set you up, we'll get your flight. So boom, I, I, I took the trip down here and I was like, wow, man, it's, it's kind of tucked in, it's, it's small, but like it had a sense of like, like comfortable, it was comfortable, it was like home to me. So I, I, I was relaying it back to my parents, I was like, man, I think I may like the school. But he was like, like, do you want to commit? And I was like, oh, I don't really know if I want to do that yet. I'm going to see what I, my other options. So I didn't really commit. So they were like, okay, we're going to make sure that we really put forth our efforts to try to get you to come. So Coach Ayers and I think it was like six, seven other coaches, they flew to Pensacola and drove up my driveway and was sitting in the living room. And I was like, dude, I got seven coaches here from Wofford and they are sitting in my living room. And at that moment, like, I was like, man, if they're taking, if they're taking their time out to really come out and um, to pursue me like this, then obviously I think it'll be a good opportunity. And so I signed to come to Wofford and where my life changed forever. And it changed for the better. And I'm, I'm appreciative to everybody that's uh, for the selection to, to get me into this um, spot with the Hall of Fame. Um, I'm very appreciative to my teammates, man, my brothers. I wish... I wish everybody could be here for this moment. I don't usually get emotional like this. 
But it's, this is this is a important part to my life because this was four years of my life away from my family, and they became my family. And it was so many, so many nights and days that we were together that we really um, just just bonded together, man. And I think that's what made that team one of the best teams that I've ever been a part of. And um, this this Hall of Fame induction, I know the the stats and what I did on the field, but um, this this is for my boys, man. This is for my team. This is for my family. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to win a conference championship, but this this honor with the name on the wall. In the class of 2017, I think that surpasses any Southern Conference championship that anybody could ask for. And um, I remember coming to this school, and I was like, man, if I come to Wofford, I have one request, and I'm going to need that number seven on my back. And Coach Harris was like, well, I, I don't know about that. Um, We had a guy that was here before that wore that number and you know those are gonna be some big shoes to fill man I was like I don't I mean big shoes I don't care how big they is I'm gonna fill them up and um so they let me wear that number man and it's, it's just an honor to be able to, to represent that number and I know Eric Breitenstein who wore before me he was an amazing player and um really really set the standard for what a uh, Waffle football player as far as my position to set that standard and I tried my hardest to uh Feel those steps and just lead the team, and um, it, it's 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 crazy and surreal that the number is now retired and it's it's out there uh, at Gibbs, um, sitting out there on the grass. And I was as we were coming up, and I, I was looking at the stadium, man, and I was like, man, like it's it's crazy that I'm the last person to wear that number, man, and represent it in that way. And that's that's another extreme honor that I I could take with me and just. You know, in the years to come, just coming back to visit, like it's it's, it's just gonna make it that much more special, man. And I, I once again, I appreciate the honor. I don't want to be long-winded, man, and I'm, I'm sorry for the tears, but I, I just I, I appreciate it, man. And this Hall of Fame is it's an honor, man. And if I missed out anybody, um, all my, my family members, my my teammates, my coaches, uh, the teachers, everybody that um just had a uh, that, that really just touched my life uh, in, a, in a special way just to keep me on track. I know um, being here was very difficult uh, through school and through academics and just the challenge that we face on the football field. It, it's, it's, been, it's been an awesome honor and, I, and I, I'm forever thankful to uh, be a Wofford Terrier, to be inducted to this Hall of Fame with these guys that are sitting here in front of us and um, it's a blessing to everybody. I thank you everybody for being here. I promise. We're moving on to our honorary Letterman Award and to present as our president, Dr. Naif Samhat. Thank you, Elizabeth, and um, thank you all for being here. The first thing I want to do is to congratulate our student athletes. Um, uh, Prem and I love have loved following you on the courts and on the courses and the fields, um, cheering you on and um, watching your great success. It's been a, tremendous, a tremendously fun experience for us. All of you exemplify what Wofford College Athletics is about, the true student athlete model. Um, and in today's contemporary college, athletic environment, that is rare. And we stand out 
for that student athlete model because of all of you. And we're grateful for what you represent, your success here at the college and beyond. But it's my privilege to recognize this year's honorary letterman, Dolores Chandler, someone who not may know, does know more about football than anyone else in this room. And I even think her husband would say that. And I know she's got some thoughts on today's game, and uh, it's, <laughs> I look forward to hearing them. Her keen eye for football strategy, though, and this is something people may not know, is it only exceeded by her business acumen. Through 11 corporate-related family moves, she has successfully managed a real estate development business for the family for nearly 40 years. And she has raised two bright, intelligent, and accomplished daughters, Stephanie, who's now married to Todd Hoke, and Jennifer, along with her husband, Harold Chandler, of course. Harold's devotion to Wofford started when he was recruited to play football for the Terriers, and that's when Dolores herself became a Wofford Terrier. She couldn't attend Wofford because we were all male, and so she went to Erskine. In the 50 plus years since they became Terriers, Dolores and Harold Chandler have been leaders, philanthropists, and fans at the highest level. And just to give you a small indication of their impact, Dolores and Harold have supported 14 endowed scholarships at Wofford College. They have been mentors to both students and college presidents alike, including this one. And they have shared their expertise to help guide the college's athletic program to our current NCAA Division I level. They've been major contributors to the construction of Lassane Hall and the Stuart H. Johnson Greek Village and have participated every year in annual giving, supporting the college's greatest needs as well as every major capital campaign since Harold graduated in 1971. We have the beautiful Wofford College sign on Church Street, thanks to their generosity, as well as a state-of-the-art, award-winning Chandler Center for Environmental Studies, a building that has become a central part and a showpiece on our campus. But knowing Dolores, a true servant leader, she would rather be in her seat watching the Terriers warm up, whether it's football or basketball or any sport and assessing the prospects for victory. So it is my honor and my privilege and with great pride that I present to you, Dolores, the Honorary Letterman Award for 2022. Thank you for leading and serving Wofford College. Thank you, Dr. Sam Hatt. I would also like to thank the Athletic Hall of Fame Committee for this honor. And I want to just end by saying, go Terriers, you gotta beat Cyril. <laughs> Our final award today is our Distinguished Service Award and our Associate AD Luke Feisel is here to present. I guess in the spirit of brevity from Dolores, we'll make this quick. Um, I think this is an award that is well-deserved uh, to go to Mr. Jeff Sarvis. Um, what's unique about the Distinguished Service Award is not your statistics, and everybody up here has had some incredible statistics today, and it's been well noted. Um, but it, it's it's beyond the field and beyond competition and beyond the scoreboard. And what what Jeff does uh, to serve us, uh, our athletic department, our college daily. I mean, everybody in our department knows he's he's around. Um, it's it's really special, and it kind of comes back to what everybody's been talking about. Wofford's a community. Um, and I think Jeff embodies that more than anybody. Um, he's a letter winner. He's a graduate. Uh, he's had a very successful career in business and he's gone on and done great things and, and has a great family. And he, and he 
decides to come back and spend time here at Wofford. Um, I think I could go on and on with specific actions that you've taken to further the Wofford student athlete experience. I mean, I've had countless road trips with you and um, I think there's just so much to be said that we'll leave it alone, but your friendship's invaluable to me and you mean more than you, more than you know to this department. Um, you've always made a difference. Um, I think all these coaches up here, all these student athletes don't truly know what you do and that's why we're recognizing you here today. Um, but you're a loving man, you're a caring man, you're a Wofford man, you're a family man, and we're very excited to induct you into the Hall of Fame with the Distinguished Service Award. Thanks. I think any time I stand in Wofford or I'm on campus, nothing makes me feel any more special than to be on Wofford campus. I'm very lucky that I can do that. Thank the athletic committee, uh, Nafe and Richard, thank you. Um, I, I can go on and on and on. We could talk all day about Wofford. You guys, I've, from my daughter who's sitting here, you heard some of the experience of these guys of uh, take a chance on Will, take a chance on these guys. Those chances led to these guys sitting here in the Hall of Fame. So any, anything is, is accomplished if you work hard, and I think you guys show that. So congratulations to you. Um, you and I never forget you. I got an incredible wife. I could not do that. Um, I, could, I could not be on campus as much as I do and, and do what I do if I didn't have a, someone who loved Wofford as much as I do. Um, that's my wife and my daughter, who probably would love to swim here. Uh, she's an incredible athlete, better athlete than I was when I played football here. Um, she's told me before, you know, Dad, I don't know why you can't seem to somehow get a pool put in. Uh, she'd come here, but <clears throat> today, he's right over there. Go beat him up. <laughs> tell, him to, tell him to put a pool in. Um, but I, I'm... I wake up every day knowing I'm a lucky guy. You need to know that. Don't get an opportunity to tell you in front of this group as, as much, but you need to know that. Um, for me personally, um, you know, when I came to Wofford, people say, well, how did you end up here? Well, really and truly, I don't think the coaches really knew really what they were saying when I was being recruited, but one coach said to my mother, Miss Sarvis, if he scores one touchdown or if he scores five, if he doesn't pass, he won't play at Wofford. And so my mother never lost sight of that comment. And so no matter what I did or what I talked about, she was always saying, you need to go to Wofford. Um, my mother was a, um, I was raised just my mom. She wasn't, she didn't have Dolores' knowledge about athletics. But her wisdom to tell me to know that sports beyond was really critical for me. That my athletic career is one thing, but my academic career was another. And I think at Wofford, there's no doubt that we have academic excellence. We'll carry you after all your athletic days. And we continue to aspire to have athletic excellence also. But she was smart enough to know that, and that was invaluable in my life. Because as I move out of Wofford in my football career, the amazing the doors that opened for me. So many people thought I was much smarter than I really was because I was a Wofford. I, I graduated from Wofford. Didn't really care as much about the fact that I played football, but I graduated from Wofford. I had to be fairly smart. I wasn't a dumb jock. That was kind of a phrase we used back in my days. But the doors that were open for me because of Walford College is invaluable. And I continue to stress to all the young athletes that I see about enjoy your career, have fun, work hard. I mean, some of you worked hard. You've even said you were a gamble, but you, you're sitting here in the Hall of Fame at Walford. It's never going to change. So for me, I try to encourage athletes of all sports, male and female, when I'm here, that enjoy your career, have fun doing it. Um, love every moment of it, but pay attention to the academic part too. 
because there will be a day that doors that will open will be greater than anything you accomplished on the field. So I think that's important. You know, athletes, when I first came here, I didn't look like athletes look today. Male and female, I didn't look like that. Um, they're much more accomplished, uh, much, have so much more talent. Um, it's amazing. And I think the challenge for us as leaders, especially administrative part of Wofford and the coaches and all, is that we, it's easy to say, we, we would like for athletes to, to, to think certain ways or how we thought, well, we're a little bit older, but I think it's important that we try to gauge ourselves to think like athletes think today, which is not how I thought. I never one time ever thought about putting on a uniform outside of football after college. That's not necessarily what kids think about today. And that's okay, because if you look at where, I mean, from the day Richard Johnson got here and Sam got here, you look at where we're at today, we want that. We want what these athletes, how they think and feel today. This is the current athlete. The model of athletics has changed greatly especially in the last four years. So what I, well, I think our challenge is that we, we learn to think more like the current athlete, and that will continue to guide us for sports and academics as we move forward. Again, I want to tell you, it's truly an honor for me to stand here with a class. It's an honor. I'm humbled, and I'm, I'm grateful that I can even stand here and be part of this class. So thank you to everyone here. Thank you. Um, that concludes our ceremony today. Congratulations to everyone. Just a few housekeeping tips for you. If you will leave your plaques here for us, we are going to represent those to you on the field at halftime and celebrate you in front of the, that crowd. If you will meet down on the field where the cheerleaders will be five minutes till the half, we will be down there with your plaques to represent those to you. And also at the conclusion of this, if you and your family and friends will stay and see Mark Olinke, we'll take some pictures of you over here. So again, congratulations to the class of 2022.